Hey, hey, everybody, this is Taz Street with Positive Out Loud, and today we're going live with Michelle Molitor, and we are going to get her online right now. Hey. Just a there, there you hey. are. Hey! <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so glad that you can be here on Positive Out Loud, and so we can help people break through some of those limiting beliefs and help them learn more about what's really holding them back. So yes. first of all, I want to want to introduce you to everybody. So this is Michelle Molitor. I said that right. Molitor, right? Okay, yes. Great. A plus. So <laughs> you are, I know you are a confidence coach. You're an author, a, an international speaker. You're a transformational hypnotherapist. You help people rewire their brain very quickly so they can eliminate those things that they've been wanting to eliminate for so long. Because, you know, we all can get stuck in a rut and it's just no fun and life can be pretty heavy in those certain areas of our lives. And um, I know you're an expert at that. You have like 25 years of experience helping companies, helping individuals, and um, you're just amazing. So I'm just so glad yeah. that you're here, Michelle. Thank you. I'm super <laughs> excited to be here with you, Taz. It's a, it's a happy Saturday. It is a happy Saturday, yeah. So first of all, before we begin, I just want you to tell people out there exactly where you came from and what your journey was like, just you know, kind of a snippet of what it was like and to where you are today. Sure, sure. It's been an interesting winding road for sure. Uh, let's see, <laughs> before I became a professional coach and, and excuse me, hypnotherapist, um, I was actually a creative director and web developer. I think I lost you there. Can you hear me, Michelle? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add you back in here. Technology, folks, I love it. Sorry about that. The, <laughs> the phone rang. <laughs> oh yes, that happens. Go figure. Um, so, as I was saying, <laughs> I uh, in my my former life, I was a graphic designer and creative director, and mm -hmm. that's what brought me here to the San Francisco Bay Area. It was a very exciting time, and um, we were gonna we were about to IPO and I had a golden ticket. It was fabulous, right? But then the market mm -hmm. crashed instead. <laughs> and so we did an IPO. And uh, nine months later, um, I found myself um, getting laid off. I essentially got bullied out of my job. And it really, really sucked. And it was devastating. Mm -hmm. And it really crushed my confidence. And I, I didn't know what to do or how to how to operate um, or you know how to bounce back from this and my uncle and all his wisdom so why don't you hire a coach I was like a what he's like yeah there's these thing called career coaches now I was like okay sure sign me up so um, I mm -hmm. hired a coach to help me figure out what to do next and in the process of being coached I was like oh this is my life's work so I went on to get trained and certified in many different ways shapes and forms um, and um, have been doing it ever since. Actually, this week is the 17th anniversary of my business, Nectar Consulting. So it's very wow. exciting. And <laughs> yeah, congratulations yeah. on that. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> um, and and so um, you know, over the years, I've I've had a coach for many years in various ways, shapes, and forms, and I've learned lots of different things. And there was still a few of my own stuck spots blind spots, right, that I just couldn't see. And mm -hmm. um, a little over two years ago, I discovered the work of a woman by the name of Marissa Peer. She's a world-renowned therapist, author, speaker. and um, She's indeed, very fascinating. I, I saw her on the Lewis Howe show. How, yes, Howe How show. show. Oh, yes. my God, that was an amazing interview, yeah. Yes, I love her. Um, and so in doing some work with her, I was literally able to remove – 
the blocks that I had been chasing my tail around for, I don't know how many years, 15, 20 years. What, trying to... what kind of blocks? What kind of blocks did you have, man? So my block, uh, the, the biggest one was um, around um, like how to, it was a money block. It was like, why can't I get my mm-hmm. business to get to this next level, to this next level? And mm-hmm. it was really, really frustrating because I was doing everything that I was being told and coached and guided and um, to mm-hmm. do. And yet somehow something wasn't quite right. right. And Literally within two to three weeks of doing this work with Marissa, things massively shifted for me. It was fascinating. It was absolutely I was blown you away. Said, you said two to three weeks, right? Two to three weeks. I had oh, been, wow. I had been trying to get at these subconscious blocks mm-hmm. for 15 to 20 years. And in two to three weeks, boom. And I was like, whoa. So when she started training mm-hmm. people in her methodology, I was like, pick me, right? <laughs> and so I've gone <laughs> on to get um, trained and certified in her methodology um, called Rapid Transformational Therapy. And it's, it's really astonishing work. It's, it's an interesting kind of hybrid that brings um, hypnotherapy, neuro-linguistic programming, and cognitive behavioral therapy all together. Mm-hmm. And and so in doing, I started doing that work, and but then I was left with, well, did it work? What happened? Did it sh- what shifted? Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. just from my own experience, I know that that stuff bubbles up after, even after you get to the aha, like oh, that's the thing. But then your brain is very tricky. There's a part of your brain called the amygdala. It's your fight or flight mechanism. I like to call her Amy. And Amy just loves you. She just want to keep you safe, right? That's her sole purpose mm-hmm. is to keep you alive and on the planet. And so that's like you, the lizard brain. They call, that's right? your yeah. lizard brain, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Amy's the lizard brain. And so <laughs> when you're trying to shift something, and um, you've had this massive aha, but you've had a familiar way of being and doing and operating in the world. Amy's like, oh, no, 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 we're not going to change that. Because one of the rules Mm -hmm. of the mind has is your mind likes familiarity. So even if what's familiar is is painful, is uncomfortable, isn't serving Mm -hmm. you, Amy will Mm -hmm. keep that in place for you. Because that's... So that's why some people stay in like abusive relationships, right? Exactly. Horrible things. Okay. Exactly. Um, And so what I've done um, over the last year and a half is I've incorporated RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy, with my coaching in a really unique way. I call it um, a 30-day rapid rewiring program. And we combine the RTT with the coaching in a way that one supports the other. So the RTT, think of that as we're getting at the subconscious. We're having a deep subconscious conversation with yourself to get at the real Mm -hmm. cause, the root, the reason of what that block is. Why do you keep doing that thing that you really don't want to be doing, whether it's um, drinking, drugs, um, abusive relationships, depression, um, lack Mm -hmm. of focus, lack of motivation, lack of confidence, right? There's so many different things. Um, And then I Mm -hmm. follow that up with coaching over um, a 30-day period to really support people in a way um, at a conscious level. So then they can take the shift that they've created and then put new powerful goals and strategies into place to um, enhance their lives really, really fast. And so it's, it's such a joy for me to watch my clients now literally be able to move out of their own way um, really quickly on things that they've been struggling with for many, many years, sometimes their whole lives, right? So, so what, what, do you, what are some of the most amazing transformations you've seen in some of your clients? Um, let's see. So I had uh, one client who came to me and, you know, the, the, the initial thing they come to me for is never really the, the real issue, <laughs> nine times out of ten um, <laughs> and she came to me like um, I really want to grow my business I keep getting it it keeps getting stuck and every time I get really close to this level then I do something mm-hmm. I self-sabotage and it drops down again I was like okay she's like oh and by the way every time that happens my body has a 
a very strong reaction by having a flare-up of um, IBS or inflammatory bowel syndrome. I was like, ooh, that's really no fun. How about we get rid of that? Yeah. She's like, okay, <laughs> that'd be good. And so inside of the work we did, inside of 30 days, um, the part of the work is um, not only the, the hypnosis, but I actually create a customized recording for my clients as well. Um, based on our conversations while they're in hypnosis. And part of their homework is to listen to that recording every day for 21 days because that's what it takes mm -hmm. at a minimum to build a new habit where what you're actually doing is building new neural pathways in your brain, right? And so mm -hmm. she was listening to her recording every day. We were having our coaching. And on day 22, she, she emailed me and she said, today is day 22. I've listened to my recording every day for 21 days. I had my biggest client meeting ever and the IBS is done. It's complete. And my body hasn't reacted negatively in any way, shape or form. And, and when I reached out to her like a month later to say, Hey, you know, can you do a little testimonial for me? She was like, what did we work on? Like it had, it had evaporated <laughs> from her consciousness. So, um, Oh wow. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, Another client. So can you talk a little bit, a little yeah. bit about the neural pathways and what, what, is, how exactly that works and how, and how you rewire that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so over my years of being a coach, I've really gotten into the neuroscience of things. Why do our brains do what we do? Because I mm -hmm. used to have a conversation. Well, coaching is cool, but it's kind of woo woo, and people don't buy woo woo. But like, actually, it's science, and science is cool, right? <laughs> right, right. And so. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the amygdala, that part of your brain that is just trying to keep you safe, right, mm -hmm. um, will come up with um, decision points about yourself. So you're going through your life, no matter what age, uh, an incident, an event happens, and you consciously or unconsciously make a decision about yourself, in that moment about how you need to stay safe, right? So then Amy guards that decision, right? She fiercely guards it. It goes into your subconscious and it stays there for, uh, for however long it stays there until you recognize it and choose to replace it, right? The tricky part is, is oftentimes these decisions we make about ourselves, we made when we were very small, very young children, when we don't have the emotional capacity to discern different things. You see... Your your prefrontal your your frontal cortex it takes in information it analyzes it it sorts it it let go it lets go of the the things that you don't want to keep and then everything else drops into your subconscious so your subconscious is a big um, storage center if you will right there's no right wrong good or bad healthy unhealthy it's just that's what we got right it's all neatly that's the beliefs back there. It's okay. all the beliefs are cataloged there for you, and your subconscious mind can recall those, but our conscious mm -hmm. mind kind of filters things for us, right? So in this work, we're able to bypass the critical conscious thinking mind and go directly to the subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. So in that, in that process, then, you're able to get at those underlying beliefs that you've been carrying around, like, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. Um, who am I to do that? Am I capable? Whatever those beliefs might be for you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so in the process of, A, locating the belief and then pulling it out like a bad weed, you're able to literally, as a conscious adult at this age, whatever this age is, right, go, oh, mm -hmm. that's not really serving me anymore, so maybe I'll just let that go. And then you can literally rewrite, rewire your brain because your brain, particularly while in hypnosis, your brain doesn't know the difference between what is real and what is perceived, right? So mm -hmm. if you've got a, a traumatic memory, for example, you can literally rewrite it, re-script it. Like I'd, I would rather it go this way and I'd rather feel mm -hmm. this way, right? Mm -hmm. And then the recording that I create enhances that new belief you are good enough. So what you brain, are smart enough. What brainwave are you in when you're going through the hypnotherapy? Because I know there's beta, alpha, gamma, that sort of thing. Is there a certain brainwave that you're 
brain has to be in in order to rewire it? Or Well, while in hypnosis, we're dropping you down into an alpha brainwave state. It's that place okay. where you're, you're between fully awake and fully asleep, right? It's actually your, your super learning state of your brainwaves, right? It, it's a mm -hmm. state where you're very suggestible. That's why hypnosis is so powerful because we're creating positive suggestions that enhance your thought processes, right? So um, the, the recording then, um, I mix in some binaural music so that every time you listen to it, I, I tell folks um, typically to listen to it as they're going to sleep at night because if mm -hmm. you fall asleep, it's okay. Your brain's always listening, right? So it's mm -hmm. dropping that information down into your subconscious really easily. Mm -hmm. And the more you listen to something, um, the more familiar it becomes, the stronger those new, new neural pathways become, while the old ones tend to break apart. Well, yeah, because I've been listening to a meditation in the, in the day and at night with different types of beats going on. I, don't, I guess that's what they call it, some type mm -hmm. of music. And... Uh, Things have been shifting for me, for sure. It's it's quite. I've been doing J Joe. I don't know if you heard Joe Dispenza. Oh yeah, yeah. Future meditations. Joe. Yeah, yeah. It's he's pretty, awesome. Pretty amazing. But I've and I've gone to hypnotherapy before, but it was just one session. So how is that like going to just one session compared to what you're doing? Sure. So um, I do all of my work virtually. So I do it all on the computer and via Zoom so I can work with people all around the world, right? So our hypnotherapy session is two hours, right? And mm -hmm. then we follow that with um, three 60-minute coaching sessions. And the, the hypnotherapy allows us to get at the root cause, to create that aha moment, that, oh, wow, okay, now I really understand why I've created this for myself and then the coaching then creates that ongoing support because essentially you're doing a brain detox, right? You're eliminating old stuff that you no longer want and you're inputting new mm. empowering stuff. And in the process of doing that, Amy can get a little fussy. Sometimes she'll be like, oh, no, 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 we're not doing that. And, and so people will have different kinds of emotional reactions to it. And so I found right. that having the, the coaching support there for them each week mm -hmm. afterwards mm -hmm. um, gives them a way to process it, to dialogue about it, to like, oh, and understand the, the subtle shifts that are beginning to happen. Because sometimes folks have massive shifts really quickly, right? I had one mm -hmm. client I worked with who was a writer, is a writer, but she was getting very anxious about writing. And literally within five days, she was writing furiously again, right? Um, after been blocked for like two years. Um, and other folks, it takes a little longer um, because mm -hmm. those thought patterns, those thought loops are more deeply integrated into their, their neural pathway. So the listening to the recording creates those new neural pathways um, through that repetition. So it's, it's a mm -hmm. more... Um, I like to think of it as a whole container. Like you get to step right. into the pool and thrash about or swim about or float about, whatever is for you, right? Um, but right. When, you, when you step out 30 days later, you're like, oh, okay, that's so much better. And then for folks, sometimes there's a couple things that they need to work on and they're, they're integrated, but they're separate. So I have a 90-day mm -hmm. program too. So it's kind of a rinse, repeat. Each month we work on a different topic and then we're, they're supported through the coaching and they get a different customized recording each month and then they can start to layer and listen to um, each month. Yeah. So I noticed that like with counseling, you go and you talk about your issues and problems and things will pop up where you realize, Oh, this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm sabotaging certain things. Um, but what I noticed with counseling is they don't really, they give you some things to work on, but definitely they're not rewiring the brain, if you know what I mean. So, mm -hmm. Even though you know that there's something going on with you, it's still there, right? Is, you and, see where I'm going with it? Yes, I do. And so, you know, talk therapy has its place. Coaching has its place. They're all different mm -hmm. modalities, right? Um, right, right. And, and so I, you know, I did therapy years ago myself. And 
sometimes that's just what we need. We need someone to listen to us. We need to be seen and witnessed exactly. and heard right. to help mm -hmm. us externally process whatever's happening in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is an interesting thing, thing that I found, Taz, is not everyone actually wants to change. They say they want to change, but when they're actually given the opportunity, they're like, oh, well, maybe, and they'll, and they'll come up with a myriad of different excuses, um, which just tells me, okay, well, they're just not quite ready yet. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in their own right, place, right. on their own journey, no judgment whatsoever. Um, Do you think that's from a, like a deep-seated fear that's like something's like they're confronting something that's like really scary or really, I don't know, just, they're just, it's just so hard for them to look at? You think that's part of it? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've worked with people all around the world who have who've gone through some really horrible things. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's it's really horrible trauma, and sometimes it's it's not that. But you know, oftentimes people are like, "I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to bring up the past. I don't want to live through that again," which is understandable. Um, but as I always tell clients, um, as we're going through the hypnosis, you're not reliving a scene. Like the scenes will pop up. Um, because we're asking the subconscious mind, what's at the root, the cause, the reason for this lack of confidence, let's say, right? And, and your subconscious mind will bubble up data, information, scenes, events, pictures. And um, we're not reliving the scene. We're just reviewing it almost as if you were watching it on your computer. Like, oh, wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. Kind of almost as a third party looking in on a situation. Right. Um, and, and it's, it's fascinating to, to witness, right? The, the ahas that people see. And, you know, there's a lot of emotion that comes up sometimes. Everybody's different, you know? Um, mm -hmm. some people go lightly into hypnosis. Some people go really deep. Um, I always tell people you can cry, yell, scream, cuss, not out your face. It's all good. Whatever you need to do, <laughs> right? Because I get everything. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's, I, I, you know, I, I, I tell folks, this work is not for the faint of heart. If you're, if you're ready mm -hmm. and interested to unburdening yourself from layers of old beliefs that might not have even been yours, they might have been handed to you by, say, your parents or siblings or other adults in your life when you were very young, um, and when mm -hmm. you can recognize, oh, that's not mine, that was someone else's hurt, pain, fear, sorrow. I can let it go. I can literally like put it in a suitcase, leave it on the side of the road, mm -hmm. walk away, right? And when it comes mm -hmm. to, you know, difficult traumas, um, folks tend to, you know, they'll, they'll kind of touch on it. But you're, again, your subconscious mind will bring up what you need to bring up, right? Okay. Um, I, had, I had one client who had been suffering from migraines her whole life. And she had a, a very, very difficult childhood. And what we got to through the, the hypnosis was she realized that as a three-year-old, um, when her mother, had a, her mother had another child, her mother, who happened to be an alcoholic, put her in charge of the infant which, as you can imagine, it's stressful mm. for adults, let alone being a three-year-old trying to take care of a little baby. And yeah. so her, her body created the migraine as a way to check out, to give her a break, because she had become hypervigilant, you know, caring for her, her little sister. Mm -hmm. And so when we, we realized that that had been the well-worn groove, when stressed out, you get a migraine. That was the programming in her mind, right? So what right, we right. did was we said, oh, well, you know, she's 49 now. She doesn't need that anymore. So we turned it off, literally, and her chronic migraines went away. I mean, it's astounding, some of the things, the shifts that happen for people. And then the person doesn't have to get on these crazy medications or figure out what's going on. Or I mean, there's so much craziness yeah, that can yeah, absolutely. go about with all of that. So Absolutely. That's incredible. So what do you find is like the deepest 
I mean, when you get to the core of most people, what is it that belief that you think just kind of lies in most of us? Ah, uh, well, there are just not true. <laughs> that there, there are three, three core beliefs that um, Marissa has uncovered in her 30 plus years of doing this work. Um, mm -hmm. One, and probably the most prominent one is I'm not enough. That feeling mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not something enough. Right. The second one is um, fill in the blank. X is not available to me. Love is not available to me. Available to me. Success is not available to me. Um, relationships are not available to mm -hmm. me. Whatever that might be. And and then the third. And that's one why is, so many people. You know, when you look at that, there's so many people who just can't find that soul partner, or, or who just never make enough money. Or yeah, that is so true because there's always something in there for somebody. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, lack. Absolutely. So it's about the lack. Yeah. It's a, there's a missing and I can't get at that missing. Right. And then the third one is I'm different. Right. And, you know, in ancient times we, we lived in tribes, right. And mm -hmm. as a tribal member, we were safe, but if we were different, if we were outcast, we wouldn't survive very long on our own because you needed that mm -hmm. tribe around you for food, for shelter, for all of those things. And so it's a very, very deeply seated fear of being different. But the, the irony is, is that we all feel different, even though we're all very, very much the same in a lot of ways, even though you and I are different from each other, obviously. Um, but we, but at the, the, the center of us having that belief of feeling different then makes us the same, right? Does that make sense? Exactly. When you look out in the world right now, there's such a divide, right? I mean, yeah. Democrats, Republicans, you're wrong, you're right. And, and at the core of it all, we're all the same. We're all human beings with the same emotions, feelings. We all want the best for all of us. Exactly. But we get caught up in the and the stories, right? Yes, the stories, the stories that keep us <laughs> spinning, the thought loops that keep us running around on the hamster wheel thinking we can't have what we actually, actually want. But what I've learned from my own experience, because I, I had my own version of I'm not enough and this is not available to me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and through doing this work, both in working with Marissa and being trained by her and working with people um, as a an RTT practitioner is I've rewired all that. And it's like, Oh, I actually, I am good enough. I am smart enough. I'm a lot of cool things. Right. And it's taken me a long time to kind of figure that out, which sounds kind of funny, but um, in, in coming to that deep understanding and acceptance, mm -hmm. um, then Everything has shifted for me. It's, it's created uh, greater joy and satisfaction in my life. My, my business has done an amazing um, shift and I'm doing beautiful work with people, super fulfilling, rewarding, and working on some amazing projects with other people. And yeah, it's, so it's when you can really understand that if there's, if there's just one thing that those who are listening take away from this is that you mm -hmm. are absolutely enough and tell yourself that every day, put it, write it on your mirror, put it on your phone, put it mm -hmm. on your computer, write it on your hand, whatever you need to do to keep mm -hmm. reminding yourself that yes, I am enough. And when you can really embody that, it's like the blinders come off. It's fascinating. So I know that a lot of people do like affirmations where they talk out loud about, you know, who they are and what, what they want and that sort of thing. How do you feel about affirmations and, you know, why does that not work for some people? Well, affirmations can be powerful. And when it's not, when it doesn't work is because you've got two conflicting beliefs. So your mind cannot hold two conflicting mm -hmm. beliefs at the same time. So if your conscious mind is going, yes, I can, I can be successful. And your subconscious mind is going, oh no, 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 that's not available to you. Sorry. No, can't have that. Right. 
it creates this kind so of. So it can't pain override. Pump. Okay. Gotcha. It can't because emotions are stronger than logic. Emotions will always win, right? And so mm-hmm. you've got an emotional belief in your subconscious mind that says, oh, no, that I can't have that. That's not available to me. I'm different. I'm not good enough. I'm not something, right? And so mm-hmm. even though your logical mind is, yes, I am, yes, I can, right? You can, sometimes you can brute force your way through it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it really takes that repetition and getting at the subconscious belief that says, um, Oh, I'm different. That's not available to me. When you when you eliminate that, then you come mm-hmm. into harmony, and then things can change really, really fast. So you so you, you're like you're like some you're like a person that goes in and takes out all the weeds of the garden. Yes, exactly. You're, you're a I'm weed a removal person. <laughs> I'm a weed remover. <laughs> Yanking them out. Yeah, no but these are required. No, it's all organic. No, not such. <laughs> and, and and I I think that what most people do is they just take off the, the top of the weed and it's still there, right? Yeah, you know, when you that's a great a analogy. Metaphor. It really is like, oh, I'm cutting the grass, but you didn't really pull it out by the root, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, as somebody who spent years cutting the grass, <laughs> not pulling out the root, I was like, oh, hallelujah! I finally got it—the root cause. Oh, phew! Right. Um, and it makes a right. huge difference. And it's like um, it's like removing the veils, right? You can finally see more clearly and mm-hmm. stand in your power more fully, more grounded in who you are and what you have to offer, not from a place of ego, but just from a place mm-hmm. of, yeah, I know a few things. I can help people. And there's right? some divine intervention with that as well. I mean, sometimes your beliefs will just kind of, go on their own, right? If you pray about it enough or great grace can come into your life, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. You know, I'm, um, I'm a very intuitive person and I, I call them downloads. I just kind of get information from spirit. Sometimes it just kind of comes through me. Oftentimes in the work that I'm doing, um, stuff's just kind of coming through me and people are like, can you repeat that? I'm like, Nope, don't know what I said actually, <laughs> but it just <laughs> comes through. So, yeah, it's pretty I kind of had that same experience because I, I like to do hand drumming, and there's been a couple oh, yeah. times where I would go in and like a circle, and there was this one hand drum circle where I went in and there was, you know, candles and it was very peaceful. And I noticed my hands were just moving, I was not moving them. Yep. They were, they were moving on their own. The creativity was flowing through me, and I was like, wow, this is super. Cool. <laughs> Isn't it? Yep. Welcome to the world of downloads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean it's it's really um it's really fun. It, this is a this is a kind of a fun example of that. Um uh about two years ago I was looking at um lean in circles as uh, an opportunity different opportunities for me to speak, right? There's a the the largest lean in circles here in Palo Alto. And mm-hmm. I was sitting there kind of doing some research and I got this this little, this little you know tap on my head. Start <laughs> your own group. I was like, oh, mm. okay. What should I call it? Wonder Woman Unite. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I did right, and it's you know it's flourished, and I have this really cool women's group that I you know I offer online for for ladies from all around the world. But it was just one of those things. It just like. It just came to me just like that. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't asking for it. It just went bing, like, you you know, drop a pebble in the, in the pond. So to so speak. tell us a little bit about the group. What's that about? Um, sure. So Lean In Circles, um, Cheryl Sandberg started it with, from her book, um, Lean In. And essentially it's, uh, she started as a way to provide support for women around the world. And so um, there's in-person groups and online circles. And so I decided to start an online circle. And so um, there's a private Facebook group, uh, Wonder Woman Unite! Exclamation point. It's very important, the exclamation (laughs) point. And Mm -hmm. we've got nearly 300 women from every corner of the planet um, who are part of it. And I have a a monthly call. I just had it yesterday, actually. 
at uh, mm-hmm. 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 Eastern. And we just, mm-hmm. you know, we talk about different things ab- about how to support women and really stepping fully into their power and finding their voice mm-hmm. and being the amazing human beings that they are. So, uh, for example, yesterday we talked about why it's important to celebrate, you know, to taking mm-hmm. time to whether they're small or large things to really allow yourself to have that win because um, when we do that, it releases happy chemicals in our brain, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, which makes your body mm-hmm. feel good, which makes you healthy mm-hmm. and encourages you to do more of those kind of things that make you feel good. Right. So, right. Yeah. so when we organize a drawer in our house, we can have a little little dance party, right? Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I got some cool socks. I got some cool socks. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your book. I know it's called Breakthrough Healing. You're a co-author of that. And yes. um, so what is that about? I actually have it here on my oh, desk. Oh, awesome. Breakthrough Healing, yeah. <laughs> um, and so... Um, I co-authored it with um, Irene Freitas, Wei Hong, Claire Roy, Alexis Brink, and Iris Netzer Greenfield. And it's the, each of us has a different kind of healing modality that is mm-hmm. um, not Western, necessarily Western medicine, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it, we wanted to write it as a way to show people that there's other ways of helping you heal um, without having to fill your body with all sorts of, you know, drugs and chemicals and, and whatnot. And so, um, you know, our, our brain is a really, really powerful thing. And one of the, you know, one of the rules of the mind that, you know, I was telling you about is that um, when an emotionally induced symptom, when it stays there long enough, will... Um, create a physical change in the body, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's what um, psychosomatic is, right? When we're um, worrying about something, stressing about something, if we do that mm-hmm. long enough, it will create illness of some kind in mm-hmm. our body. A uh, great example of this, and I didn't understand this at the time, but when I was in college, my freshman and uh, sophomore year in college, every semester at final exams, I would get like the flu or strep throat because I was so fearful of taking tests, right? I hated taking tests. And so my body- So right before the test, you would get sick. I would get sick, right? For like a Mm -hmm. whole week, flat out. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. But you know, there was a part of me saying, oh, I don't like take tests. I really hate to, I don't want to take this test. I don't want to take this test. And my brain was like, you want to take mm-hmm. it? Okay, well, we'll just lay you out for a little bit, right? <laughs> and oh, and so, was that from, from, from the belief that you're not good enough to take the test? Um, I think it was... Uh, or smart enough or something? Or? Probably smart enough. And I have a big fear of being judged, right? And so that, right. that falls into the judging category, right? <laughs> Are oh, yeah. you good yeah. enough? Or can you check all the boxes? You know, it's all, but all back to that. <laughs> am I good enough kind of belief, right? And so when you can recognize the the thought loops that are going on in your mind, um, mm-hmm. are they lifting you up or are they bringing you down? Mm-hmm. Excuse me. If you're worried about something, the more you think a thought, the more true it becomes for you. So if you're thinking, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I'm worried, oh, I'm stressed out, um, you will mm-hmm. create... Uh, physical shifts in in your biology it's it's mm-hmm. really really fascinating there's a um a great author um bruce lipton he's written a book called bruce the lipton, Bi- yeah he's written the biology mm-hmm. of belief and it's you know for all you science fans out there it's chock full of science and and research right but he really looks at how your your physical environment impacts your body at a cellular level, right? And so um, another scientist, um, Masa, Masa, oh, what's the name of it? Um, uh, Masa, so if your physical, Masa Romoto, that's his name, right? So if your physical environment is kind of messy and dirty and that'll affect you on a cellular level? Um, or if it, it's... Think of it this way. If you're, if you're swimming in a, a pool of 
toxicity, that toxicity is going to get into you, right? Energetic. So the negativity, the right. negativity, okay, gotcha. right? Okay. Um, and but if you if you're looking at it from a messy environment, right? Um, that too, that clutter creates mental clutter, right? Right. right. And so. Um, I always tell folks if you if you're feeling unfocused or unmotivated, clean your space because that eliminates that mental clutter and literally gives you room to breathe. It gives your brain room to breathe and will allow for more of that creative thinking to come in. Awesome. Yeah. So there was another question that we were talking and now it slipped my mind. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what do you intentionally do like when you wake up in the morning? How do you create a day where you know it's going to be where it's going to be positive? Um is there certain things that you do for your for yourself in the morning and just how do you go about your day to keep it keep keep yourself grounded, keep yourself focused and and happy? Sure. Sure. Um well, I always like to start my day before I even get out of bed with what am I grateful for, right? Mm -hmm. And and what are my intentions for the day? What do I want to create today? Today is going to be an awesome day. Today I have the opportunity to be of service to these people to help them have ahas, and that feels really great, right? And so you want to always think about it. What's um, again? Emotions always overrule logic. So what do you want to mm -hmm. feel? How do you want your day to feel as you go through it? Oh, I want to feel good. I want to feel growth. I want to feel excited and happy, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you can think of it as kind of pre-paving your day, right? Setting those intentions and then letting go of exactly how that shows up, right? And allowing mm -hmm. the universe to provide the opportunities for those intentions to arise. And they might show up that day they might show up a different day right um mm -hmm. it's i i have some friends who are amazing manifestors right and they can set their intentions and boom stuff happens and, and you look at like how did you do that it's like i don't <laughs> ask how i just i just plant the intention and see what shows up yeah it's really cool <laughs> and so what what happens, say, if you started feeling uh, some negativity and started feeling frustrated or, or that sort of thing? What would you do to kind of shift that? Sure. So, you know, life happens. Things, mm -hmm. things go awry, right, that are not necessarily in your control. The one thing you do have control of, though, is, is how you think, right? Amy mm -hmm. really is not in control. And so you get to reset, you know, you might think like, um, say for example, you roll out of bed and you smash your toe into the bed post. You're like, yeah, <laughs> right? And that can be really painful and it can set your day off on a negative trajectory if you're not careful because then things can start to spiral downward. But allowing yourself to catch yourself, I'm like, okay, thank you for reminding me of my physical body <laughs> and that's going to feel better and I'm going to move through the day and I'm going to have a better afternoon. Just like kind of doing a pattern interrupt, right? Stopping, pausing mm -hmm. and like recognizing the frustration. It's not about sugarcoating it. It's not about stuffing it mm -hmm. or poo-pooing mm -hmm. it. It's just like, okay, I recognize that, that frustration and how long do I want to sit in this, right? I used to have a, a teacher when I was at um, CTI, the Coaches Training Institute, who would say, um, oh, shoot, word just left me. Um, basically, like, reset, right? If, you're, if you've gone haywire, you're all frustrated, upset about something, just catch yourself and reset and choose how you want to move forward instead, you know? As it's like coach. turning off the computer and turning it back on, right? Right, exactly. It's absolutely <laughs> that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, things happen, and, you know, I have a little coach that lives in my head, <laughs> as you might imagine, and stuff goes awry, and I'll be all like, mm -hmm. and I'll catch myself, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I, I'm choosing to sit in my puddle of muddle for this moment, and I'm going to stay here. I'm going to give myself an hour, 
And then Mm -hmm. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go on with the rest of my day and I'm going to reset and let it go, right? Letting Mm -hmm. it go is one of the most powerful things you can do because when you carry around grudges and frustration um, based on, you know, whatever's happening in your world, Mm -hmm. it's only toxic to you. It's generally not toxic to other people unless you're in a room full of people and then that can bring you know a whole room room full of people down you know have you ever walked into say like a a board you know a a group meeting and you can feel the energy of the room you can feel the mood oh yeah right Mm -hmm. that's what i'm talking about there's generally if there's one bad apple there's one person who's like grumpy it can literally pull the energy down of a whole room but then you can have somebody come in and who can be Yay, right. This is going to be fantastic. And <laughs> lift, lift people up. Uh, you know, yeah. I, uh, one of my, my favorite um, movies is called Inside Out. It's that uh, animated movie. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. It's a coaching movie. It's about all the little people in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joy. Hi. <laughs> we have them all. All of us have all yes, of them. Yes, we do. For sure. We do have them all. Some have more than others, you know, of course. And um, Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. My, my grumpy face usually tends to come out only when I'm driving in traffic. So <laughs> <laughs> we all have our bikes. Well, you're in San Francisco, so I would imagine there would be lots of traffic, right? Yes, yes. We do have a wee bit of traffic around here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of working from home, though. I don't have to get in, into the traffic most often. <laughs> Absolutely. So one more question before we, we head out. What, what makes the rapid transformation therapy different uh, than other types of, you know, hypnotherapy, that sort of thing? What makes it so that you can quickly help people uh, change their beliefs and, and help them get unstuck? Sure. Um, I've, I've done hypnosis in the past as well, many years ago, and mm-hmm. it felt good in the moment, but it didn't have any long lasting change really. Mm -hmm. Um, What is different about rapid transformational therapy is because it's, it's twofold. Well, that, and the way I do it, there's, there's three steps. There's discover, rewire, transform. So discover, I have a a detailed client intake form that gives me a lot of information about what's going on, um, where they're stuck, what they're frustrated with, what they want to overcome, how they'd like it to be differently, right? Then in the mm-hmm. rewiring, that's when I drop them down in hypnosis, um, and we we take them back to those places, those times, those events in their lives that have created this stuck spot, right? And that information bubbles up, and that gives me more data. And then the third portion is the transformation. So while they're still in hypnosis, given everything that I've gathered, I then am creating a customized... 20 to 30 minute recording for them that's instilling those new empowering beliefs, new habits, new behaviors, new thoughts, right? Which then Mm -hmm. they listen to for 21 days. And that creates that rewiring process of those neural um, uh, synapses in their brain. And that's what helps create that long lasting change. And then I add, I supercharge it by adding in the coaching, right, as well, Mm -hmm. so that they're able to process it even further and, and mm-hmm. then I have different assessments and tools that I give to my clients in addition, right, in between our coaching sessions to really help them um, delve even, even further into mm-hmm. that area that they want to transform. So it's a, it's a very deep dive, whereas coaching tends to stay more at a higher level. Therapy is a deeper dive, but it doesn't talk therapy doesn't have the the rewiring component of it Mm -hmm. Um, right right. so it's kind of the best of all worlds is the way i look at it that's why i love it so much i know it sounds i mean you've seen amazing changes within yourself and you've created a beautiful wonderful life where all parts of your life are working in harmony which i mean what who doesn't want that in their life right exactly (laughs) exactly you know we we all ultimately that's what we all do want is we just want to be happy. We want to, you know, experience life fully and joyfully. 
and be mm -hmm. of contribution. You know, I've, I've learned over all these years as a coach that we all, as humans, we want to be seen and heard and respected for what we have to offer, mm -hmm. right? And our own minds get in our way of allowing ourselves of having that oftentimes. So this is a, a, an interesting way of helping create those shifts that doesn't have you have to like slog through molasses and go through all of the things, the horrible things that might have happened to you in your past. You're kind of dipping mm -hmm. in, but then you're coming back out again um, with a much greater awareness. Um, and instead of, you know, I It's like known... diving into the, to, to, you know, off into the water, right? And coming right back up. Yeah, yeah. It's of, like right? diving yeah, in the okay. deep into the pool and coming back out again. Whereas, you know, I've, I've known folks who've been doing talk therapy for years and years and years and years and, and mm -hmm. still are talking about the same thing over and over and over again. There's a really great book um, called Lost Connections by Johan Hari. And he's a, a journalist and suffered from depression for many, many years and was on antidepressants mm -hmm. depressants, and was seeing a therapist and he just kept upping his dosage but never really got better. And so mm -hmm. um, he decided to like figure out well, what's really at the cause of depression and found these um, points that are about having significance in our lives and when they're missing, that's what fundamentally creates the depression. And we can shift that in our minds versus having to be on antidepressants or talk therapy for many, many years. So for example, um, having meaningful work is one of those mm -hmm. key pieces, right? Um, operating from your core values is another piece. Um, having relationships, valuable relationships in our lives. We've become so disconnected, right? Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways. And so those are all the things that are at the heart of why so many people are feeling sad, depressed, anxious, et cetera. And I mm -hmm. think um, if we can start to address those innate needs that we have, all these other bigger problems around opioid addiction and gun issues and mm -hmm. the violence and, and whatnot, we can start to, to shift that tide. And so I'm, I'm really delighted to you know, to be working with Marissa Peer on an ongoing basis, actually helping her create some new training programs and bring mm -hmm. more of her work out into the world um, to help really eliminate some of that disconnection that's happening for so many people. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's, I mean, that's, this is what is so needed right now because there's just so much destruction going on, so much hurt, and um, <clears throat> people just don't know how to work through it. They don't have the tools or the yeah. knowledge, or and they don't understand. So if you don't know, then you can't grow, right? That's, Absolutely, that's I, you know. And my heart it, you know. goes out to the to so many people who are feeling um, stuck, feeling uh, depressed, anxious, who were hooked on alcohol, on drugs, on on so mm -hmm. many different things, because it's just their their heart, their spirit crying out for a deeper connection and they don't know how to create it. So they numb themselves mm -hmm. from the pain mm -hmm. through these different, you know, modalities. But yet when you can get at the, the core stuff and, and bring light to it and help them understand, then it's much, much easier for them to let go of the, the drugs, the alcohol, the addictions, whatever those might be and be mm -hmm. more fully present in their lives, more fully connected and aware. And that, that's a really beautiful thing to watch people when they can transform and, and move away from the self-destructive behavior into really positive affirming behavior. It's like, that's what it's all about. Hi Kelly, hi mom. <laughs> I just want to say hi to people who are on here. So I love it. I love it. Hey. Thanks for being on here live. We love it. So, um, yeah. so Michelle, can you tell everybody where to find you um, on, like, on Facebook, on your website, that sort of thing, if they want to reach out to you? Sure, absolutely. Um, so you can always find me on Facebook, uh, Michelle Molitor. Um, I also have my professional page, Michelle Molitor Executive Coach. 
And uh, you come visit my website, nectarconsulting.com. I have all sorts of great information in the brain candy mm-hmm. section. I have a bunch of free stuff. I have guided meditations. I have some ebooks with um, transformation recordings, articles, interviews, awesome. all wow. sorts of grand stuff. So please, um, you know, feel free to visit there and uh, consume to your heart's content. And if, you know, anyone's interested in, in, you know, having a conversation, I'd be happy to. You can always go to my website and um, go schedule a discovery session. It's a complimentary session. We'll talk for 30, 40 minutes um, on the phone. And you can tell me more about what's going on. And if I can be of help, I'll um, tell you more about that and see how we can, you know, work some magic on you. I'm sure with your knowledge and experience and all that you've done, who could not come on the other side, uh, you know, through the other side to where they want to be with, with all that you do. And, and, and I could feel the love and the caring and the support and just the magic that's within you. So I really mm. appreciate you and I appreciate Thank you, you being so here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your kind words, Taz, and delightful to be here with you. I love it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I just, I love, love, love what I do, and I feel so blessed to be able to do this work and to share it with other people. And so I thank you for the opportunity for being able to share it with you and and your viewers. And um, yeah, if if it helps create an aha for someone, then, you know, uh, it's a good day. And as we went through this conversation, if anybody's still here watching, if you have any questions, just, you know, place them down there below and we can answer them right now. Absolutely. Um, But if... But if not, that's fine. We're cool. Mm-hmm. I can talk about this <laughs> so, <stuff> all day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really? Right? So amazing. You know, the, the journey that we're all on. And, you know, some people are never really interested in growing and, and learning more about what's going on in, inside themselves. And then there's other people who are on this journey for a long, long time that just can't quite get there Yeah. to the, to the core. And this is what it's about. It's about getting to that core those core beliefs that are, that are that are keeping you stuck, keeping you afraid, and keeping you in that place of desperation, you know, sometimes. So yeah, yeah. Michelle is an expert at getting plucking those out and getting rid of them for you. Mm. Well, thank you, Taz. <laughs> really you. Uh, wonderful to be here with you today. And mm-hmm. um, thanks to everybody who joined us. And yeah, if you have any questions, you know, you can always. Uh, Hit me up on Facebook or wherever or shoot a message. And I'll put the link below too. Yeah. Great. So. All right. So thank you very much. Peace and blessings. Take care. You too, my dear. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.